slumping a bit because it's the darkness and everything around you. When you go underground, it's tremendously atmospheric with the damp, the dark, echoey sounds. Being below ground, it's being away from the busy modern world. You're going back in a time warp almost. When I was four, five, six, I can remember being frightened of the dark. But once light appeared, those terrors would disappear. Gremlins, if you stay down there too long, they come out and eat you. There's a feeling that there's danger, which gives a sort of spice to the whole situation. I like the gremlins. It's monsters with big teeth. Every Christmas, my brothers and I got Rupert Bear on yours. And Rupert Bear, he always has several different adventures. Here we have Rupert finding a hole in the ground and exploring into subterranean cave recesses. As we do. As you do, right. Without helmet or light. Without helmet or light. As and we do, sometimes. He, <laughs> he always, um, I mean, one adventure he goes off into the sky, one adventure he um, sails to far off lands, and one adventure usually kind of meets the imps of spring or the imps of autumn and has an underground adventure. So here we see him, you know, imps of spring conducting him through subterranean tunnels. Goodness me, these are sexy, aren't they? They are, yes. Like um, so, you know, this obviously burnt itself into my consciousness. I think this conversation <laughs> serves to distinguish very well what differentiates sub brick members from everybody else in the country who goes underground. <laughs> Right. The one, that, the one that is most influential to me, I think, probably, is 1954, which is this one, when I would have been five. Rupert surprises two imps of spring, raising a turf trap door. Now, the, the idea that, you know, you could, you could be in an ordinary field and a two-foot square of turf could be hinged upwards on a, on a hidden toothed rack, and he's beckoned down these steps into this, this underworld where there are imps working little lifts in lift shafts, going down to a little railway with a rather peculiar shaped car, and the car sets off, jumps chasms, is caught on hooks, swings across, is lowered down to the subterranean kingdom of the imps. My first encounter with the underground was my father used to know a man who was a sewer man, and he used to tell me stories about the Edwardian sewers in Brighton. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until uh, last year, when I was age 62, that we actually got in one of these sewers, and it was exactly how he'd explained it. And, and it's quite marvellous to go in this sewer in Brighton, which southern water take you on, because you eventually emerge in the middle of the garden. Exactly, like, yes, it's, 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 it's the same syndrome. Yes. <laughs> Much of the astonishment of people coming along. You sometimes get the feeling that the whole of Britain is hollow and that you could fall into something just by walking down the road. People live in East Surrey, don't think of it as a mining county, but with a thousand years of mining, it has some claim to be a, a mining county. There's over 12, maybe 15 miles of underground galleries there that have been there for possibly a thousand years. I'm interested in what the technique is. 
Well, don't ask me. You keep yourself as vertical as possible. Are you all right, By Malcolm? holding behind the ladder with your hands, yeah. keeping hold, your back stiff. Hold your runs, Malcolm. Hold the runs. When you get a bit lower, get your hands behind the ladder. It's caught up. We don't have a typical member. We vary from professors to housewives, if I may be so sexist. It's very nice down here. Recommend it. The only common thing is in some way, we all like man-made underground structures. You don't even have to go underground to be one of our members. In fact, we have one or two of our members who are rather nervous, even frightened of going underground. And good luck to them. Now, back in 1911, there was a huge inrush of water following a massive thunderstorm that uh, came pouring in the entrance we just used. We washed a lot of rocks and boulders down this gallery. There's one of them there. That's just a small one. That's big enough. There's plenty more bigger than that, I'll tell you. People like us obviously want to go underground in Something the first place here. either because we like the mystery of it, we like the darkness. Another one. <laughs> we like the solitude or we just like to see a vista of flickering lights and shadows. <laughs> It's quite nice when everyone has to get on their hands and knees and crawl. And there are people in this world who couldn't lower themselves to do this. As people so pompous, they'd never be able to crawl along. Crawling along with your face in someone's bum is a marvellous sort of <laughs> community experience, I feel. I think there's a feeling of space in the dark. Boundaries vanish and you feel a great expansion until the cold gets you. <laughs> All right, not so far now. Our objective is to rediscover or uncover some underground system will record anything that's lying around, anything inscribed on the roof or walls, and then link it with documents. We can therefore tease out some strand of history. So the two I want you to see, there you are, over here, and look in this corner here. Oh, yes, that's very good. There's your Cretan maze. Now, why is it on the wall down our old stone quarry? I do not believe the quarry men did that. Maybe not. What about no. all these people that are putting their initials down That's here in them. the early 1700s? I don't think they're quarry men. I think they no. are. they're people like us. I would have thought... Nearly 200 years ago Early or more. explorers. 300 years ago. Um, exactly. Yeah, possibly a bunch of lads down here. Well, what a bunch of lads know about Cretan Ooh, mazes. That is a popular symbol in, in folklore and mythology, and mm -hmm. I think those sorts of designs were passed down over the years as a test for hand and eye. If you could draw oh, and reproduce yeah. that design over and over again, yeah. once you know that technique, you can, you can draw that every time. This symbol cross-cuts all different cultures, all different religions, but it's saying the same thing to everyone. What's it saying to you? Now, what's, well, it's not what it's, it's what it's saying to you and every, all of us. Now, what it is saying, that spiral represents man's psychological and spiritual development and destination. Finding the obvious explanation I don't think is easy in this case, but I think the more fanciful you get with your theories, the, the less likely they are to be true. Well. 
You're neglecting people's unconscious motivation. Now, if this symbol is what I say it is, then it's part of people's unconscious. Of course, you can't prove any of this. And I think a secret society met down here. Anthony Crawley, so... Uh, now, I'll have to get away from the side.